Praise the living God. Amen. Um, I'm pleased this afternoon to share with us uh, oh, this morning. Thank you. To share with us a word from the Lord. We are grateful to the Lord uh, who has been good to us even in this season that the enemy had purpose to be uh, indeed a bad one. The Lord has had our prayers and is answering us well. We need to be grateful to him for even this that we see. Uh, knowing or getting a chance to see what the enemy had purposed, you can't stay, remain in the same state. You can only give thanks and worship the living God who is a good God. He's in charge of the nation. He's in charge of everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he does not make mistakes. Amen. He doesn't make mistakes. Amen. Yeah. Uh, this morning I want to share with us in continuation with our theme of the year. Isaiah 54, verse 2. My message is a continuation of our theme of the year. Uh, Isaiah 54, verse 2. Uh, it has been echoed uh, again and again. As you know, we are continuing with the same thing. Uh, uh, this year as it was last year to enlarge the place of our tent to lengthen and stretch forth our curtains uh, the curtains of our habitation and we encourage you to spare not but to lengthen our stakes um uh, The Jane Overseer has been sharing over this theme on a number of occasions. Even recently he was here and he shared about it. It has been, it has been broken into four parts, largely. The gathering of the lost souls as the first part. The discipling of the converts as the second. And then leadership development among ourselves as the third and then the giving the honoring of God with our substance hallelujah so there are four major parts under which we are looking at this theme and don't forget we are getting to the end of January meaning we are deep into the year um, and by now we should be busy in line with our own theme. This morning I want to share with you about two of them, if time will allow, but I will begin with one, and this is, I want to share with us about the one of evangelism and the honoring of God with our substance, if time allows. Um, in our expansion, as a ministry, uh, evangelism is a major part of that expansion, that enlargement. It takes many other forms, but this is one of the forms it takes, and which is obvious as a ministry, the form of evangelism as the enlargement. Evangelism is a militant part of the church 
It is the militant part of the church. It is a four ministry. It is a ministry that uh, on the forefront of the other ministries. It tends to run ahead of the other ministries in clearing the ground uh, and in collecting the, the fruits, in collecting the souls. In the, in, the, in, the, in the collecting of the fruits, in the winning of souls, this ministry faces many things that causes it to be militant. It conquers people's hearts. People's hearts get uh, weighed down by the word of God, get convicted by the word of God. Um, it deals with demons that have been occupying the lives of people. It involves deliverance, uh, the first level of deliverance of chasing demons. It deals with sicknesses of people. People have infirmities that sometimes have taken long and have no medical cure. And as you interface with them in evangelism, uh, you deal with such because those are the needs of the people and God has offered and is ready to heal them. Uh, it deals with uh, principalities, powers and principalities and gates of darkness that are in several locations that control the way people think, the way people do things, which uh, as an evangelist you must deal with to set the people free. Uh, these these uh, evil gates control how people behave. It controls everything in the area. As an evangelist, you a number of times have to only do them, to deal with them, if you are to succeed in those areas. If you ignore them, it, uh, the ministry will be very hard in the area, as the people will be largely in, in <clears throat> under control of these evil gates. These gates, the Lord said, are the major contenders of the church. I'm building my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hell has placed several gates in several places using several arrangements to take control of, of things, to take control of the world. So as we do the evangelism, we are to contend with this. This makes it a militant arm of the church because these are battle fronts. Uh, people's hearts are hard uh, to win over. It takes a lot. Um, it takes a lot to have people win uh, one over to the Lord. It requires a lot to be to fulfill this part of uh, our calling, incidentally, I, I, I believe all of us are to be engaged into this. Uh, though we have people who sit in this office, but all of us, in a way, are to evangelize. We are to witness for Christ as believers. We are to witness for Christ as believers. And in one way or the other, you'll be engaging yourself in, with some of those and more as we do that evangelism. It would require us uh, to have power to deal with that dark power. And the Bible teaches, and we know it in practical terms, that this power is the power of the Spirit of God. Acts 1.8 Our Lord said, but you shall receive power you can take us to Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in the utmost. Uh, friend, can you give us Acts chapter 1 verse 8? 
uh, atmosphere parts of the earth. We, we need the power of the Holy Spirit as a matter of must if we are to do anything in the ministry of evangelism. And of course, it is true for all ministry. Uh, you can't be a prophet without the, the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a requirement. Christ told the disciples not even to leave uh, one place until they have received him. Until they are baptized in the Holy Spirit, they were not to go out and do the work of God. It is similar to us. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to be effective uh, in the ministry of evangelism. I said even in the other ministries, but we are talking about evangelism here. And so when I say evangelism, I'm not I'm aware of the need for it for the Holy Spirit even in the other uh, other ministries which we must be doing. But we need the, uh, to be baptized in the, in the, with the power of the Holy Spirit. After you have been baptized, after you have been baptized in the water, we need to thirst and to hunger for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Even when you have ever been baptized, you can be still uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit again. Uh, because you know we leak. There is we, somehow we leak. There is some leakages. There is some leakages as we get filled and as we are on the work and as we go about, there, is, there are leakages that happen through holes that are underneath us. Sometimes we teach and say, through, we need to close those holes. But we must remain spirit filled to be effective uh, in any ministry, evangelism inclusive. We need the power of the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit himself that speaks to the people as we are evangelizing. Ours is to obey and to be humble enough to carry him with us, to be spirit filled. And as we speak, it is the Holy Spirit that speaks to the people. If you don't go with the Holy Spirit, you can't effectively minister in this ministry. Because people are not picking anything of your word. It is the Holy Spirit that, uh, as you speak, that using your words that speaks to the hearts and the spirits of these people. And the Holy Spirit himself witnesses to them. He witnesses them as you are also witnessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the Holy Spirit that speaks to them and convicts them of sin and weighs them because he knows them. He's a spirit. He speaks to these spirits. These people are spirits. Amen. John 14, 16. He's also called the Comforter. The Holy Spirit is called the Comforter. Uh, uh, the Bible refers to him as well as the Comforter, whom the Lord God promised to us. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. He's here to abide with us forever. He is the Comforter. Yes, uh, go to 26, 1426. 1426. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I say to you. Yes, that, that and more is his work. He reminds us, he reminds us he speaks to us about things that are to come as much as, and, and at the same time he speaks to us of things that were and even the things that are. He directs us as we witness. He teaches us all things as the Bible has said. He will instruct us sometimes what exactly to say 
Because he knows the person we are witnessing to. He knows their conditions. And some of them will tell you but a, a, a just part of what they are. But the Spirit can, will lead you uh, and tell you, will guide you to the very things that matter in their lives. And he goes ahead to as well speak to them to give their lives to Christ. He witnesses for Christ. The scripture says he witnesses for him. He testifies of Jesus to the people even as we, we speak. He testifies uh, to the people about Christ. He's a, a witness in their spirit. Even as you speak, it is him who convicts them. This helps us when we go for evangelism to avoid arguments. It is not uh, win, one who wins the argument. It is a, 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 a spiritual thing to give the Holy Spirit a chance to win over the person. So for us, we avoid our own arguments with these people because, as you know, often they have differences with us. It is not us winning over the people. It is Christ himself with, by the witness of the Holy Spirit. Ours is to carry the physical message, to be physical vessels, to approach the person or the people and the situations and speak according to his word. And it's very important that as witness, we speak the word of God. We avoid our own wills and our own attitudes and all this that could do, uh, have, uh, cause issues and simply stick to the word of God. It is the word of God that has got the power to convict these people. Even as we speak, the Holy Spirit will want to follow the word of God, not our human arguments as we speak to these people. And uh, it is very fulfilling. It is very fulfilling having somebody give their lives at your ministry as you speak to them. It is very fulfilling. Uh, I remember one time I came to office and, and didn't sit in the office and I encouraged some people and we went to Mulago to preach. It, in the morning, we went to preach. It was a morning. It was, I was, we were very happy. We were very happy. We came back very happy. As we went bed to bed, speaking to these people about Christ and praying with them. People want to hear, people want to hear the word of God. We are not to minister when we are free. We are to minister when the need is there. We are to minister at all times. We are to minister even in the morning. Hallelujah. Amen. You can use part of your leaves. Can you ask a leave in your office only to go and preach? Hallelujah. Only to go and preach. Ask for those two days and spend them in Mulago. Spend them in Chirudu. Spend them around preaching the word of God. It will be very fulfilling on your part. As you plan your time, as you budget your time, let's budget for this as well. I'm saying even important time, God wants it. Because sometimes our ministry is, is, is put into shame when we think of witnessing when we are free. Uh, who cannot do that? <laughs> Anybody can do that. What is the cost for your ministry? Anybody can do that in their free time. Ministry is not for your free time. Ministry is ministry and the Lord needs you in ministry. He, he says this, John 15, 16. Uh, take us to John 15, 16 and see what the Lord is saying. What is he saying? He's saying, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, may give, he may give you. Why is he reminding us of that? Hello? He's reminding us that <clears throat> we, 
we, when he looks at our conduct, it's as if we chose him. He's saying, I chose you. Hallelujah. He chose us. He, we did not choose him. Let us stop behaving like it is us who made a choice of Christ. It is Christ who made a choice of us. And he's telling you and me, and I know why. I made a choice of you. I know why. And the reason is that you and me may, may do what? May bear, may bear fruit. And he's also aware that some of our fruits are not remaining in this church. He's aware. And he's telling you the fruit he wants is the fruit which that you the, the fruit that your fruit should remain. Hallelujah. Hey, church, are we together? I'm talking about evangelism. I'm also talking about enlargement. I'm talking about the theme of this year. And I'm saying we are to evangelize, to enlarge. I'm talking about what Christ is expecting of you and me as we purpose to evangelize. Friends, uh, this, the, the Bible here is not talking about, to us as a congregation. It's talking to you as an individual. This is not a congregation message. It is an individual message. God did not choose a congregation. He chose you as an individual. And he's not saying, I chose you as... No, he's saying, I chose you as Mr. Ojok Silvano. That's what he's saying. I chose you as Sam Wabasa. That is what he's saying. And don't behave like you chose me. Please, stop that. 2021. And know that I chose you that you may bear fruit and that your fruit may remain. Friends, let's take those words carefully. Our fruits are to do what? To remain. Hallelujah. That's the desire of the Lord. He's aware of some efforts, of our efforts. But he's saying he wants fruits that remain. Amen? Amen. It is, the fruit, it is when the fruits that remain that the next verse applies. What is the next verse? Uh, no. Leave us in the 16. Leave us in the 16. The next part says, uh, no, leave us in verse 16, please. And it says, after saying that your fruit should remain, why should it remain? That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may do what? He may do what? God has made many openings for us. Has made many passes for us. But as usual, we avoid his word and do things our way. Hallelujah. Can we stick to the word of God and test it? Can you start showing us the fruits, your fruits, that are remaining in our midst and we see how he's not answering your prayers. Hello? Or you think there is need for some theology here too. This could not be true. We have theology, our, our father here. I can. <laughs> uh, to me, it is as obvious and as plain as that. There is no more theology needed on that. He has said it all. He chose us. We did not choose him. And he chose us to bear fruit. And it is not about just bearing some fruit. That fruit must do what? Must remain. And it is after that now, he wants you to go back to him and see if some of your uh, answers are not going to be answered. He's just ready to answer people who are busy in his vineyard. Hallelujah. You become uh, a partner with him in the vineyard as you do that. And I'm saying also, that we need the Holy Spirit to be able to bear fruits that can remain. We can't bear fruit that can remain if we are not spirit-filled. Because it is all about God. It is about Him. And He has sent the Holy Spirit to be part of us forever, as we have already read. And His work, as I said, is to empower us. You need energy, you need power, you need courage. Preaching the gospel, you need courage. Uh, 
But also, as you speak, I said, I want you to be conscious to the Holy Spirit that is speaking to, to this person's heart. And your part is to confine yourself in the word of God as you speak. You don't uh, engage yourself, ourselves in arguments. If the other party we are talking to would want to drive the whole thing into an argument, we tend to pull back from arguments to life. We are to impart life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. We are chosen of the Lord and he has said he has ordained us at choosing us, at getting saved for this particular work. At that point, you already ordained to start witnessing for him. There is no further laying of hands you need to go and preach the gospel after getting saved. Hallelujah. He has already ordained you as you got saved. Amen. Amen, church. Hallelujah. The command is simple. Mark 16, 15. He says, what does he say? From, from 15, he says, you did not, no, I said Mark, Mark 16, 15. From 15, Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every, to every what? To every creature. Hallelujah. Say to every creature. No, church, let us read it. Uh-huh. Together. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To every that's why I have the challenge with the church myself. Hallelujah. To every creature. Every creature needs the gospel of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Every creature needs the gospel of the kingdom of God. Because as man fell, everything fell. As man fell, everything did what? Fell with him. Everything left the presence of the Lord. Everything became contaminated. Everything became defiled. Everything became defiant and rebellious uh, uh, due to man who was in charge of everything. Hallelujah. I like this. And I know we've lost a lot of power by having this scripture. Uh, we confine ourselves to people. We leave the creation away from the gospel. We leave the creation away from the gospel. This creation also needs to hear the word of God. All creation needs to hear the word of God. We are to preach to everything. Yes. Speak to all creation in the world. Speak to the waters. Hallelujah. Speak to Ah. Speak to the waters. How many of us have spoken to the waters? Okay. Not many of us. I've even fasted seven days, not eating, but speaking to the waters. You need my testimonies about that? You need? Oh my goodness. I led a team. We took time and every day we went to the waters and spoke the word of God and spoke the word of God and spoke the word of God and cried tears stepping in the waters there and speaking scriptures we were led by the spirit hallelujah we've not done it once we've done it several times and not only the waters we've done it to everything that is there to be spoken to even today we are going to speak even yesterday we spoke we speak to this nation with scriptures every day Speak to the nation. Don't just come here in these four walls and we say these small prayers and say we have prayed for the nation. The nation needs to hear the word of God from you. Read the scriptures to Uganda. Hello? Read to the north. Read to the south. Read to the east and the west. Read to the central. Command the nation the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. As you are not doing that, the other people who are worshipping their evil gods and their evil gates, they are doing that exactly. 
Hello? Are we together, church? The mandate God gave to the man is to take dominion over all creation. What do you understand by that? How do you take dominion over things that you don't speak to? How do you do that? You call them things. I'm saying people are assigning powers to mountains. People are assigning powers to wells where you pick water. People are by speaking to them, by the way, they just speak. They use the mandate. They use the mandate and continue to speak to them and tell them what to do. You pick water from the same source with these very people. You grew up doing that. Picking water from cast wells. Wells that have been assigned the powers to deviate your destiny. You've not yet uh, come to the realization that you have the power to do a reverse of that. To speak and say, whoever will be picking water from this well shall be a blessed person. Let everybody who picks water from this well be blessed. Hallelujah. Oh, church, are you, here? Are you there? I preach like a marketplace person. Amen? In the marketplace, we don't have these, these religious thing, approaches. Our approaches are militant and real because our circumstances are real. Amen? If you don't go real with the circumstances, you come empty-handed. You'll come back empty-handed because you'll be defeated by the other people you find in there. They will be doing the right thing spiritually. No worshiping evil gods. You need to counter them with the word of God. Hallelujah. We speak to everything. Hear me well. We speak to everything. You should start speaking to your office. It has ears. Hallelujah. Speak to the gates of your office. Command it. Amen. Are we together? Are we together, church? I want, if, you, if you don't answer, I want to stop here and go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark is saying we should preach the gospel to all creation. And I'm saying that is the way to do, to preach the gospel. That, for me, that's what I call the full gospel. It's the gospel which addresses everything. Not which addresses some of the things. You are confining yourself to some of the things you are corrupt. You preach, what you call preaching, you preach for a program. You just preach for a program. Uh, there are places where you will go to preach and until you have addressed those other powers, I'm telling you, you will not preach there. Amen? You will not preach there. We took up ourselves here to go and preach to Kitugum. Uh, 20, was that 2019? Uh, Sylvan, was that 2019? When we went to Kitugum? Okay, I think it was, 20, it was 2019, around November. Um, um, as we were starting to go, the Lord started giving us instructions. I didn't know Chitugum, I'd never been there. The Lord started giving us instructions of what to do in this place and showing us places that control the town because we're going in the town and what people do there exactly. So we had information, but we didn't have the correct, the right places, uh, the locations. Though some, the locations were clear. Some were in the road. We knew how to find the road. And surely how he was telling us is how we... And we were to address some of these ones first. Hello? We were to address some of these ones first, or as we go on. And we did that. There is one hard one which I almost omitted. And God said, if you don't do that, be sure you'll come back here. You'll not reach Kampala. Hello? I remembered. And we also did it. Uh, parking our vehicle, it stopped. Park, it, it, stopped it refused to, to stop. As you know, you step in the brakes and the brakes, and the vehicle is only doing what? It's only going, meaning the brakes have given way. That's what happened to us. And every hydraulic had gone out 
the hydraulic pipe had, had got cut. But thank God it was the last stopping we were making. It was the very last one as we were arrived. And we were just breaking to enter into the gate. And what do you realize? The vehicle is only going. Hallelujah. And then we remembered the speed by which we came. It was night. And we remembered many things. We could only worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We could only worship the Lord. It's this battle. It's the militant part of the church. Uh, evangelism. You must be, have the Holy Spirit. You must be attentive. You must hear. And as I was saying, we are to address all creation. The mountains. Everything is to be to hear the gospel of, of Christ. The Lord has spoken to me and said, if, for example, if you are to speak to to the Muslims, you don't even use your argument. Just use scriptures. There is nothing that will enter without scriptures. It is, must be scriptures, strictly scriptures, as you speak to Islamic institutions or situations, Islamic situations. It must be strictly scriptures. And you are speaking to places, you are speaking to Amen. Hallelujah. Um, we deal in land. We've learned to speak to land and land has known our voice. Amen. Until you learn to speak to some of these things you might lack what to do in this nation. Because everything is encumbered. Every office is encumbered and so on. And the other day, uh, people were asking me, this country is very corrupt. How do you get a job in government? How do you get a job in government without, you know, uh, depending on your money and you locally? It is true, it is very bustling. How do you get a job in government? Amen? I'm saying if you are not able to address situations which are not human beings, and to address places which are not human beings, that question may be, it is hard to answer. Amen? We address the physical things because the Lord has spoken to us and said, avoid uh, the physical laws and depend on the spiritual laws. And he says, the physical laws are oppressive and they don't bear fruit. You have to depend on spiritual laws. Spiritual laws is his word. Speak the word to the system. Amen? Speak the word to the system. We have never done a job which has not been denied of us first. The very first job we did in road construction, it was denied of us. And they gave it to somebody else. Because we hadn't given them the money as others do. So it went a step away from the first step. It is on the second step that the Lord had arrested it there. But we had spoken. Hello? We had what? We had spoken to the physical road and told it what to do. Hallelujah. We had spoken, we have, we had spoken to God away from the papers and go to this place and God directed us and we had spoken. So this young man who arrested this person and said, no, the right person to do, the, the right people to do these people are, are these ones. He didn't know us. He's a job young man. We didn't know us. Hallelujah. He arrested it until he called us and said, come for your job. Hallelujah. The second round when we are to do the jobs, they still didn't give us. They made lies and lies about us. And even one time, this part one, they said, we are forgers. Just to make sure that even if you have the good record, you don't get it. And they sent the papers to Tunisia, the funders, UDB. And UDB said, no. These ones are the ones going to, to do the job. 
Can you permanent secretary send us the record of, of proof of what you are saying? Give you two weeks. They went around with the money for two weeks to get that record which was speaking evil of Canaan sites. And they did not get it. Instead, they were calling us wherever they were going. They called us in Entebbe. They said, these people are here. What is wrong with you and them? They called us in Wakiso. They said, these people are here. They want us to help them forge a document against you. And we have refused. Two weeks elapsed. They didn't have anything correct about us. UDB said, give Canaan sites two jobs. Actually, when they refused to give us the job, they even said, they said they are locally. Let us see how their God will, let their God give them the job. That one angered us. We took seven days without eating. How can they ridicule our God? We said we are not eating. God must answer this. Hallelujah. You speak to circumstances. Amen. The other job, um, I mean, every job is a testimony. Every job is a what? Is a testimony. There is one we have just concluded this week, which we have been doing for the last three weeks, three years of UNRWA. Same situation. We won more than one job. We won the entire job of Busoga. We won the entire job of Kampala. These are big areas. And they said, no, we can't give them. <laughs> We didn't see them. Hallelujah. We can't give them. We were in a retreat and the Lord spoke to me and instructed me on what to do. I came out. Uh, it was a three-day retreat and did exactly what the Lord told me to do. And uh, but also showed me in the spirit room what was happening. What had happened. Some of these encumbrances are in our foundation. Like that particular job, I, there was an encumbrance in my own foundation that the enemy was using. So he took me right to my father's place and showed me uh, what my father's forefathers had done. Which was an encumbrance to me. I didn't know. I was a, a good local in Kampala. I didn't know that. And then he showed me the way all the jobs we have been losing. Uh, also, he showed me other powers. I will not tell you, uh, for they are sensitive. Uh, what they have been doing to us. And showed us several projects that we had failed to get because of them. And then he took me to the gate of Uganda National Road Authority and showed me a person putting on white. Uh, those people who knew about the people of customs of then, customs, they used to put on a certain white. So that person was putting on that white, was a gatekeeper, but actually was a military person. You could see white, but in reality was a military person placed there to make sure we never enter there. And then he said, the way it was with Peter, when he was when he was uh, under bondage, under the cells, it is what is going to happen with you now. I'm going to intervene. I'm going to command these gates open. And you're going to enter. And just instructed me about two, three things to do, which I did the following day immediately. Uh, the same week that job was due for us, we signed it. It is spiritual. Hello? It is spiritual. And if you are confined to only talking to people, you can't manage. But we had spoken to these roads, we had spoken to the gates, we had done whatever the Lord had instructed us to do, and he, as you cooperate, so he unfolds, the, the, uh, everything unfolds. Preaching the gospel to all creation. I said, the mandate, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, is for us to subdue the earth. Amen? I wanted to share more of these testimonies. You can know it is more of a reality than a, a physical things. 
I have a lot to be sharing, but still I want to bring more testimonies, which we normally don't give. I know my time is up. I will stop wherever the time stops me. Uh, last year, it was last year, um, for us, every project we've done, it is a miracle. You can just ask me about any project and say, tell me the miracle about that one, I will tell you. There is no project which is not a miracle. Ever since God gave us that we just have to deal with these powers and confrontations. Um, I, I just looked at a place. We were going to Katosi and I looked at a place and I was moved in the spirit to raise my hand to this place and speak. And I, was, I wanted to do it without anybody seeing me, but you see I was seated in the front. I tried. I raised my hand and spoke to that place. And I was convinced nobody really noticed because people were talking their things. But I spoke what there was in my heart. The Lord wanted the place. So he wanted me to receive, to get that place for him. So I spoke to it and I said I receive it because it was nice. And uh, uh, about two weeks later, a broker came to take me, to convince me to go and look at a piece of land, those ends of Katosi. And we drove there. When we reached, we found, that's the place where he took us. He took us to the place where I had risen my hand to. Um, my time is up. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, where I had raised my hand to. I, I thought I was the only one who saw, but my driver had seen. He said, sir, isn't this the place where you, you prayed? I said, did you see me? He said, yes, I saw you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wa it was a good land. Hallelujah. It was a good land. We engaged the owner who was very hard. And the Lord kept on instructing us. You know, he's a good God. He tells you now, pray like this. <laughs> because for us, if we are to have the land, we deliver the land. We speak to it. Amen? If you want a piece of land which is delivered, come to Canaan sites. Amen? Because we speak to it, and the Lord speaks to us about what has been on that land that has to be handled. And we handle it. Because that's our ministry. When we say we settle you, we want to settle you in a place without the other encumbrances. Amen? We speak for your family. We speak sound marriages. We speak to your children from there. We call it an altar. Amen? And it takes us a lot of time. The minimum time it takes us is usually three weeks. Minimum. Three weeks. Every day on the land. Think of it. Every day. Taking hours on that place. Listening. Praying. The ministry is not to, pass, to get the money from the land. The ministry is to, to deliver this land that will speak blessings to you. Taking it back to the original state that the Lord created it to. Now, this land has become a contention in my office. That very land I'm talking about. It has become a contention in my office. It is so spiritual that everybody wants it. Hello? And we have, uh, my, my faith has been tested to the best. Amen? People have come with huge sums of money and they say, you know, somebody comes with the, coming with three, four times the, the money you put in and say, I want to give it to you at a go. Can you, leave it me? Can you give me this land? Uh, you get it. But you know, this man is going to put there an evil altar. But now he's talking about huge money. They, they began by telling him, and they said, I'm ready to give you that money if you are ready to give me that land. Who wants this land? I will not tell you. Hallelujah. They keep on saying, I will not tell you. And they use as many people as possible to get to you. 
But even before they come, the Lord has already spoken to us. Uh, he has given us a, a scenario and said, so and so will come. He will come through so and so. And uh, what they are up to is this. Two months later, they come. Hallelujah. And exactly the way it was to unfold is the way it is coming up. And they are tempting you with the huge sums of who? money. They are Indians. They want the land. This is the very land which our God wants. Hello. Are we together? Amen. Speak to all creation. Creation is groaning. Creation wants our cooperation. Creation wants to hear scriptures. Creation wants to hear scriptures from us. We refuse their money. Hallelujah. We know what we are doing. We are not in that thing for money as the first thing. It is ministry. Hallelujah. We are preachers of the gospel. We are reconcilers. We are reconcilers. We are reconcilers of the creation of the world with God. We are reconciling uh, in a business of reconciling the world with God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 to 19. The Bible says all things belong to God. Through Christ all things belong to God. Second Corinthians 5 18 to 19. Can you take us there? Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of the minister of church. The minister of what? Reconciliation. That ministry is beyond the human reconciliation. It's, that's why he's telling you oh, the whole world, all the things belong to God. Why are you leaving certain things out in this reconciliation ministry? Amen? And sometimes, and often so, when you deal with these things, you will find this easier to access man himself. Can you begin with dealing with these things in the area when we go? Hallelujah. We, we need to preach the gospel to our surroundings. Don't mind. You just do prayer walks. Walk preaching. Walk speaking blessings to people. Time will come when you go proper door to door. But walk speaking. Can you just walk and pronounce a blessing to these people? Walk pronouncing a blessing of salvation. What bless, is there a bigger blessing than that of salvation? Pronounce repentance. Let everybody here repent. Let the Muslim repent. Let the Catholics repent. Hallelujah. Let everybody in this direction repent. Repent. Let them repent in tears. Let them be in tears of repentance. Hallelujah. Go round and go round and go round and take your time. And I know as you are faithfully doing that, he starts speaking to you. Amen. There is a strange area the Lord has sent us into. Wow. My brother is saying my time is up. <laughs> and I have to obey. There is a strange area where the Lord has taken us to. Um, I, this one I will not mention. I will mention another time. It is indeed strange and very populated. And we go there. I know he tells you go and do this and go that and then speak to it. But I want you to evangelize in that place. And God wants a church there. Hallelujah. And then you start doing that. And as you do, he's instructing you where the powers that control them are. So you deal with them. I want to kill that sense in you which has been fearing to speak to things and ignite you into addressing salvation, reconciliation for all things. Hallelujah. As the effective way to do our ministry. God bless you.